Hey everybody! In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about different types of watercolor painting surfaces. So it isn't just paper, but I'm not going to go like super deep into the realm because this video would take hours if that were the case. In order to talk about the different types of papers and surfaces that are available to you, we first need to understand a couple different terms that are really helpful when picking out a surface to paint on. The first is paper weight. So obviously that's not like something you just put on your paper so it doesn't blow away. It's the thickness of the paper or the heaviness of the paper. You know, look at office paper, it's like 20 pound bond paper or whatever. Um, what that refers to is how heavy a ream of that paper is. So a ream is 500 sheets and in the case of watercolor paper, a ream is usually 500 sheets of 22 by 30 inch paper. So that's kind of the math there. So how much does that weigh? Uh, so watercolor paper tends to come in a variety of different weights. You've got 90 pound paper, which is pretty thin. Uh, I would only suggest this type of paper for really quick studies. I wouldn't try and do anything finished on it. This is very much beginner practice paper. Um, a step up from that is 140 pound paper, which is pretty standard, I think, for most watercolors. Um, I'm still not a fan of 140 pound because I've discovered the magic that is 300 pound paper. This stuff is almost like cardboard. It's so thick. So like it holds its shape. Um, and what's so awesome about 300 pound paper is that it rarely buckles. So if you work really wet, um, doing heavy washes, uh, 300 pound paper is amazing for that because it really holds its shape. It doesn't like get those hills and valleys like a lot of other watercolor papers get when they get really wet. Personally, that's my absolute favorite to work on, but it's very expensive. It's like for a 22 by 30 sheet, it's anywhere from 18 to $25 a sheet. So pretty expensive, but in my opinion, totally worth it because it takes a lot of stress out of trying to stretch your paper and keep it from wrinkling. Um, 140 pound paper though is probably your next best bet. Uh, this stuff, if you stretch it before you work on it, it tends to work pretty well. And the cool thing about this is you can get it in really big rolls of paper. Uh, so for example, this giant roll of paper that's almost as tall as I am. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Um, okay, struggle bus is here. I can't get it out of the box. So you just won't see it. Um, the only problem with this is that it uh, definitely stays very much in a tightly rolled coil and you need to soak it in some water and stretch it in order to make it work. So the next thing that you need to know when you are picking out a watercolor paper would be the texture of the paper. So there are a few different types of textures. Um, the first is hot press. So hot press would mean that the paper has a very smooth surface and hot press is really good if you are wanting really smooth textures. You don't want a lot of um, variation in your washes. You want them to stay very um, solid if that's the case. Um, and I find personally working with hot press paper is really great if you're doing very detailed work. Um, so if you're aiming for realism and you want your stuff to look um, very smooth and clean, I would go with hot press. The next textural option would be cold press. And cold press has kind of like a rougher texture that creates some really nice gradients in the washes. So you get a lot of granulation and sedimentation with certain pigments and they settle into the texture of the paper, which is really awesome if you like having really textural washes. 
Um, I would say it's a little bit more challenging to get super crisp, small details on cold press paper. So if you're aiming for more uh, loose gestural painterly marks, then cold press is probably going to work for you. Um, a step up from cold press is rough press, which is going to be even more textured on the page. And then the last type of paper that I have to talk about isn't even a paper at all. It is a synthetic material made out of, oh boy, polypropylene, but it's called Yupo paper. So it's kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. It's very smooth. It has almost kind of a plasticky feel to it. I think it's so much fun because the paint does not absorb at all onto the surface. So it just sits there. If you want to do working abstractly or very painterly, then this can be very, very interesting um, due to the fact that really it's like a one shot sort of thing because you can't really paint over it without disturbing what's already there. So as you can see, I could take like a wet paper towel and just wipe this off. I could also just take the spray bottle and it'll just come right off. So, you know, that could be a pro or a con, just depending on what you're aiming for. But if you're aiming for really painterly results, Yupo is super fun to work with. So I had mentioned earlier that to avoid your paper buckling a lot, you want to stretch it. And there are a few different ways to do that. But the first thing that is required for you to do is to soak your paper. If you've never done it before, it seems kind of scary. And you know, when I showed you that giant roll of paper, um, I did a really big painting. I think it was like three feet by four feet on watercolor paper. So that's probably the biggest I've ever done with watercolor paper before. But what I had to do is I had to build a wooden frame, much like you would with a canvas. And then I had to take my paper into the shower. <laughs> <laughs> because I obviously don't have a bucket large enough to soak that much paper. So I had to use the shower head and just kind of spray the paper until it got softer. Um, and so obviously that's not the ideal way to do it. Ideally you would like it to lay flat in a bed of water. Um, but you know, when you have that big of a sheet of paper and you don't have fancy studio facilities, you got to make do with what you have. So. I sprayed it with the shower head until the paper got soft and that's what we're aiming for. We want it to be soft and supple and pliant. And from there, I actually wrapped my paper around that frame like I would a sheet of canvas and used a staple gun, stapled it to it. But for smaller sheets, um, you can staple the paper directly onto a board or I have this stuff here called gator board. It's like a foam core with sort of a water resistant topping. And so you can see I've kind of stapled a couple of my in progress paintings here onto the board. And as the paper dries, it shrinks. And so it gets really tight in here. Um, I will say it did get so tight that it wanted to pull a couple of my staples out because it shrunk so much, but um, yeah, when you do that and your paper shrinks as it dries, then when you lay down washes of your painting on it, it's less likely to buckle and warp. So then you're going to have a much smoother, cleaner sheet of paper when you're all done with it. Another way you can keep your paper clean and crisp is to tape it. So in this case, you're just going to be using some gummed paper tape. So it's the kind that you have to wet with a brush or a sponge and that'll adhere it really strongly. Well, that was a quick rundown of different watercolor surfaces and why you might choose one over the other. So hopefully that was helpful for you and gives you a little more information when it comes time for you to pick out your next paper for your next projects. Good luck. Thanks for watching and keep creating.